As we all know, death is unfortunately a very real part of life. And as professional wrestling fans, we especially know this to be true because we've seen a lot of great wrestlers and legends leave us far too soon. It's something we've become used to and unfortunately all too familiar with. I want to take this time today to talk about seven dead wrestlers that I miss the most. And I don't mean to say dead in a crass way or anything like that. And there are a lot of wrestlers that are no longer with us that I miss. But there are really seven, above all else, that really kind of stand out above the crowd to me. And there are guys that I've left off the list that I just as easily could have put on here. But this is my list of the seven dead wrestlers that I miss the most. And each of them has their own special place in my professional wrestling fan heart. And they each have their own reason why they're on my list. I will start off with one of my favorites from my childhood, Sylvester Ritter, better known to you as the Junkyard Dog. Now, as a young kid growing up and watching the WWF during the Hogan era, the Junkyard Dog was incredible, man. I cannot emphasize to you what a great character he was, what a larger-than-life personality he was to me as a young kid. When you want to talk about having kid-friendly superstars, JYD was on that very, very short list being at the top. I mean, you could sit there, <clears throat> excuse me, and you could talk about the guys like the Hogans of the world and the Andre the Giants, but when you talk about star power and charisma and having that it factor, JYD always, 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 to me, ranked at the very top of that list. The man just oozed star power. He just oozed charisma. He just oozed a certain cool factor that I think very few people, frankly, ever have had in the professional wrestling business for me as a fan. The next one comes from my favorite tag team of all time, and that, of course, is the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom. And that would be, of course, Road Warrior Hawk. You know, he passed away in 2003, and it's been 10 years now. It doesn't seem like it, but it's been 10 years now since Hawk left this earth. And I have to say again, when you talk about you know, having a kid-friendly and family-friendly product at the time. The Road Warriors were freaking comic book characters come to life. These guys were street smart. They were tough. They were no-nonsense, no bullshit. They didn't back down from anybody. They were fucking cool. Hawk and Animal, to me, will always be the coolest tag team of all time. You know, whether it would be Hawk saying, Ooh, what a rush. Or he, later on, as he'd sit there and say, well, Mr. Dog, Mr. Ass. You know, there's a reason that more than one time in my life I've gotten the uh, the Road Warrior Hawk haircut. I miss Hawk. I miss the Road Warriors being together. If I could have any one tag team wrestle, any one match together, it would be the Road Warriors. I miss Hawk tremendously, just like I do the Junkyard Dog. Another guy from my time as a kid as a wrestling fan especially, is the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. To this day, one of my favorite breeds of dogs are Bulldogs. And the reason that is, is because of the British Bulldogs. Davy Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid, these guys were fucking awesome. And the British Bulldog, man, I don't even know how to really describe it. He was just one of my favorites as a kid. He was just... To me, he was just very cool. You know, he had an impressive look. He seemed like a very nice guy. Of course, he had Matilda for a period of time. That definitely helped in the terms of the cool kid factor, if you will. But he could also go in the ring. I mean, one of my favorite, one of my favorite matches, and this is saying something because everybody that's watched me for a consistent period of time knows I'm no huge Bret Hart Mark, not really a fan of his, but one of my favorite matches of all time, and I think one of the better matches in WWE history, is when Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, beat Bret Hart in the main event of SummerSlam 92 for the IC title in front of 80,000 plus people at Wembley Stadium. One of my favorite matches of all time, and I still argue, one of the best matches that the WWF ever had. You know, It's just a shame that, again, he left us far too soon. A couple of guys that you know really fit into more of the teenage years where I was changing and evolving as a human being and also changing and evolving as a professional wrestling fan. That would be Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig, and then Owen Hart. When I think of Mr. Perfect, you know, when they talk about monikers and nicknames, 
fitting the performer, fitting the individual. I'm not sure, other than maybe like a Jake the Snake Roberts, if there's ever been a nickname or a moniker that is more properly fit somebody to me than Mr. Perfect. He could do everything, and he was everything. And, you know, this is back when he first came on the scene in 89, 90, 91, you know, I'm a 8, 9, 10-year-old kid, and I still usually cheer, <clears throat> excuse me, for most of the baby faces, most of them. But one guy that was a heel, that was a bad guy, that I absolutely loved watching, that I couldn't get enough of, was Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning. And I didn't even realize it at first, but I would sit there and go out with my friends, and we'd be trying to recreate all the Mr. Perfect vignettes, the bowling, the horseshoes. <laughs> the gull. We'd be doing the shit where we're trying to throw ourselves a touchdown pass. All of this shit. You wanted to be like Mr. Perfect. You wanted to imitate Mr. Perfect because he was perfect. And now where I've said before that I wasn't a huge uh, Bret Hart fan, I was a huge Owen Hart fan. Always was, always will be. To me, the more talented of the two Hart brothers, but that's not the topic of this video. When I think of Owen Hart, man, I think of a guy, you know that you've left a mark and you know that you have a great reputation. That even after all of these years, you know, what the circumstances of how he unfortunately left us and all of this, when have you ever really truly heard anybody say anything truly bad about Owen Hart? Just really think about that. Because if somebody had an axe to grind with Owen Hart or somebody really had something shitty to say about Owen Hart, after all of these years, even with the circumstances of how he died, somebody eventually would have really came out and really said it, and it really would have been a big, huge fucking deal. It just didn't work like that. He was a great family man. He was a great husband. And to me, he was a very underrated, undervalued performer in the WWF for so many years. You know, when he was tag teaming with Coco Beware, he was the Rocket Owen Hart. But then he feuded in that great Cain and Abel storyline with his brother, Brett, in 94 outstanding stuff. But then as I changed and evolved as a wrestling fan, I truly came to appreciate how Owen Hart, whatever he was given, whether that was being the co-leader of the Nation of Domination or going back to doing the Blue Blazer gimmick, it seemed like everything Owen Hart did, he fully and completely immersed himself in and, you know, he ran with it. He took the ball and ran with it and made the most out of everything he could possibly do with whatever shit he was given. And a lot of times it was shit. And he did the best he could with it, and he did more than a lot of other people could do with that. And to me, that's a tremendous legacy for somebody in the business to have. You know, of course, Latino Heat, Eddie Guerrero, you know, he passed away in 2005, again, eight years ago. It just doesn't seem right, does it? And I still argue to this day, and along with Chris Benoit, too, but especially we'll focus on Eddie Guerrero because he didn't kill his family. When you look at Eddie Guerrero, you could, you could definitely see where when he passed away, it seems like in some ways a locker room leader was lost in the WWE, a presence that the fans could recognize and respect, somebody that was a, a bridge of the gap from the Attitude Era to the Ruthless Aggression Era and afterwards was no longer around. You, know, you had a guy that had some mainstream appeal, but he definitely appealed to the hardcore wrestling fans because he had everything, especially once he bulked up with all the steroids he was taking and everything else. He had the look. He had the charisma, he had the personality, he could get his point across on the mic, and of course when you're talking about Eddie Guerrero, just a phenomenal professional in the ring, and a phenomenal in-ring worker and performer, who would have lots of great matches and got the best out of a lot of people. And you know, again, when you talk about Eddie Guerrero, you know, it's just sad that I think he left us far too soon, and it had an impact on the WWE. Because if Eddie would have been able to stick around another two, three, four, five years, even working in a somewhat diminished, maybe more part-time role, he still could have helped elevate people. He could have made people stars. And the WWE lost that when he passed away in 2005. And I always felt like we were robbed of a real chance to show our ultimate respects to Eddie Guerrero. And you know, sometimes people sit there and say, you know, maybe we kiss Eddie's ass too much because of the fact that he passed away. No, I think we do that sometimes, in fact, because we didn't always fully understand, appreciate, and respect just how truly good Eddie Guerrero was, unfortunately, until it was too late. So we still, to this day, eight-plus years later, try to make up for those mistakes 
by, you know, spewing all of our admiration and respect and love on this man that we miss so tremendously. But to me, the wrestler that I miss the most, and, you know, going back to being a longtime wrestling fan, you know, I could have put Andre the Giant on this list and talked about him for a long period of time. But I think the one that struck me the most and always will will probably be the macho man, Randy Savage. You know, this was a guy that was there in the 80s during one boom period of professional wrestling. Then he was still a big-time player in the mid to late 90s during the Monday Night Wars, the other real boom period in mainstream national professional wrestling. The Macho Man was a household name. In a business today where you truly don't have any household names, Macho Man Randy Savage was a huge star. He's a huge deal. And you look at him, that was at a time where he had to share the spotlight and have a lot of the spotlight taken away from him by Hulk Hogan and then at some point in time Andre the Giant and the Ultimate Warrior and all these other guys. But Macho Man transcended all of that. He became a pop culture icon. He became a household name. He became a well-known international figure. He became a wrestler who was a, you know, a endorsement icon with Slim Jim to this day. People remember the Slim Jim ads with the Macho Man Randy Savage. But you know what Macho Man really was? The Macho Man was who the Macho Man was. And a lot of people respected that. And to this day, and again I emphasize to this day, when I talk to people and they find out that I still watch professional wrestling, there are a few names that are always brought up. Now, here I'm in Virginia now, so people will talk about the old Crockett days. They'll talk about the Mid-Atlantic Territory. They'll talk about the Ric Flairs and the Dusty Roads and the Steamboats and the what-have-yous, and that's great. They'll also talk about the guys like the Hulk Hogan's. But another name that is always brought up, is always brought up, is the Macho Man Randy Savage. Because, damn it all, to me, when I talk about guys that were the coolest, and I emphasize, again, that's a very, you know, kind of subjective thing, but the coolest wrestlers of all time. You know, people will talk about Scott Hall, and hell yes, Scott Hall was a tremendously cool wrestler in so many different ways. But I'm not sure to me if there was ever a cooler wrestler, there was ever a better wrestler to watch, if there was ever a cooler wrestler to want to go be like, to want to go imitate, than the Macho Man Randy Savage. When you think about the Macho Man, he influenced an entire generation of wrestlers. Because not everybody could sit there and be a Hulk Hogan, or an Andre the Giant, or a Big John Stud, or a Jake the Snake Roberts, or an Undertaker. They couldn't be like that. But Macho Man wasn't the biggest guy. You know, he's like 5'11", 6'4", 230, 235 pounds in his peak. A lot of smaller guys, guys like my size, they could aspire to be like the Macho Man Randy Savage. He's had an impact on the business that is still being felt to this day and will continue to be felt for years to come. And I remember the feeling I had a couple of years ago when I found out that the Macho Man had passed away. It felt like a piece of my childhood had died. It felt like, you know, really and honestly, it felt like a piece of me as a wrestling fan died. When I think of the Macho Man Randy Savage, above all these other guys that I miss, the Junkyard Dogs and the Hawks and the British Bulldogs, Mr. Perfect, Owen Hart, Eddie Guerrero, it's the Macho Man that I miss the most. Maybe it's because of the fact I didn't get to see him have that one last shining moment in the WWE. I didn't get to see him go into the WWE Hall of Fame. I didn't get to see one last run. I didn't get to see one last match. Maybe I feel robbed to this day, and I know damn good and well that a lot of you out there feel robbed too. But nobody could ever take away all the great memories, all the great matches, the great moments, the great promos, the great skits that the Macho Man Randy Savage provided to me for the better part of almost two decades. Almost two decades. A true legend among legends in professional wrestling that I still miss to this day. I mean, this guy did everything from the frickin' mega powers to being the top guy to going to WCW, being a part of the NWO. Damn it, he did so many cool things. Why can't wrestlers today be as cool as these seven individuals that I just named? Imagine, just imagine. If people in the business now were as good as these great legends and performers that sadly are no longer with us and all left us far too soon. I'd like to know what dead wrestlers you miss the most. 
I'm sure a lot of you are going to agree with some of my um, names, and frankly, I think my list is a really damn good one. I know some of you have got other ones that I didn't talk about that you want to talk about feel more than welcome to. But, you know, these guys may be gone, but I definitely assure you of this. For me, as a professional wrestling fan, they will definitely never be forgotten. And I thank each and every one of them for all the memories and great moments they provided to me as a wrestling fan to this day. These are the guys here that definitely played a role in me falling in love with professional wrestling and still being a professional wrestling fan to this day, even when it seems like there are times where I don't want to be anymore. It's because I think back on all these great moments and great experiences that I've had and the people like the Junkyard Dogs and the Macho Mans and the Eddie Guerreros and the like, all those memories and great moments that they provided me. When people come up to me and try to make fun of me, the Schleg Daddy, for being a professional wrestling fan, you know I'm going to clown their ass, and I always do. And I always tell them, shame on you. It's not shame on me. I'm embarrassed for you. I'm feeling shame for you because you didn't get to experience the fucking Road Warriors, man. You didn't get to sit there and freaking dance to the junkyard dog. You didn't get to sit there and watch the British Bulldogs and watch Davy Boy Smith. You didn't get to try and imitate all of Mr. Perfect's great vignettes. You didn't get to sit there and root for Owen Hart. You didn't get to sit there and catch Latino Heat. And you didn't get to feel the madness, oh yeah, of the macho man Randy Savage. Shame on all of you that never got to experience these things. I'm glad I did. I'm thankful I did. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. Rest in peace to all of these guys. I hope their friends, their family members, knows that at least from this wrestling fan standpoint, they're greatly missed and they're gone, but they'll never be forgotten. Oh, yeah.